Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Smith, lecturer in philosophy with Catholic Studies Academy. Today I want to begin a series of short videos about classical ethics. Um, by classical ethics, I mean the form of ethical thought and moral inquiry developed over the centuries uh, by uh, the great theologians and philosophers uh, of the Western tradition. In particular, though, uh, especially uh, the thought of Aristotle and uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. Now, I think it's, it's valuable to do this and to spend some time thinking about classical ethics, uh, because right now we live in a time of great um, moral ambiguity, um, a great deal of ethical confusion. And I think that the classical tradition provides us with the light that we need in order to, to see things uh, more clearly. So what is the, the most basic fundamental principle of uh, classical ethics? There's probably a couple different places you could uh, begin, but I've always found it useful to begin with the claim that Aristotle makes about human action. He makes this claim uh, in the opening passages of his famous work, The Nicomachean Ethics. Famously, Aristotle claims that all human action is for the good. I'll say that again. All human action is for the good. Now, let me be clear. By saying this, Aristotle is not um, expressing moral naivete. Right? Aristotle is well aware of the corruption uh, that um, subverts human action. He's well aware of the existence of villains and, of course, of moral weakness. Uh, but what he's, what he's really sort of getting at is a question of um, the psychology of human action. That is, what is it that causes human action? And for um, Aristotle, one of the key views, uh, key aspects or conditions of human action uh, really revolves around um, the perception of the good. That is, when we do something, we do it because we view it to be desirable in one way or the other. That is, there's a perception of um, an objective or a course of action as desirable, right? Worthy of pursuit, worthy uh, of endeavor. Um, so that there's always this, this sort of perception that's prior to action. Now, this is very important, actually, more important than one might think. For one thing, it means that human action is not a leap into the dark. Sometimes, um, you know, the way people talk about human action, they have a sort of almost exaggerated sense of freedom in which they really see uh, human action as just almost arbitrary, groundless, causeless. It's just as if anything's wide open and you just sort of plunk down on one of the option. But that's not the way it is, really. Really, Rather, we, uh, we pursue things, right? We, make, uh, we, in, we form choices and intentions in response to the perception of something as desirable, right? So uh, what that really raises the question then is, well, okay, if, if it's the case that all human action is motivated by perception of something as desirable, then one thing, we've kind of moved this into the cognitive realm. That is, we're not just talking about feelings or sort of uh, arbitrary choices, but what we're really talking about is something cognitive, that is a perception, a way of seeing and understanding uh, reality. And so uh, bringing into view right this idea of the motivation of human action uh, really moves us into a question about reality, a question about how we think about action and those sorts of things. And of course, uh, it raises the real question about, uh, the really fundamental question about why do we see certain things to be desirable, right? What is, uh, what is it about us um, that brings something into view as desirable or not desirable, right? And is there any way of distinguishing between what's really desirable and what's really not? So in my next installment, I'm gonna uh, take up that question. I hope you found these comments uh, useful and edifying. Until next time, God bless.